What's up guys? I am finally taking the time to get back to Input Mapper and address some of the many uh, complaints and criticisms it's had over the years. Uh, so let's take a look at that. So, one of the biggest things that people have complained about Input Mapper is kind of the ease of use um, or the kind of like knowledge barrier that there is uh, when you start playing around with it because it does have a lot more features and functionality and expandability and all that stuff, but uh, usually all that stuff comes at a cost. The, the users are faced with like a, a settings overload. There's just too much stuff there. Um, it's not as point-and-click friendly as it used to be. Instead, there's a lot more kind of like engineering designed uh, UI rather than aesthetically pleasing. Um, so that's one of the things I'm working on. Um, uh, mainly uh, in terms of the mapping and the profiles. And uh, we'll take a look, we'll take a quick look at what I'm thinking about doing here. Uh, Basically, this is what you're used to seeing. Uh, this is just your normal profile. Um, but now uh, there's going to be a, another option that says the input device type. And when you create a profile dynamically, like you're on the uh, device, I don't have anything connected. But if you were here and there were a device connected, and on that device you selected new profile, uh, where the options were for profile, it would automatically fill that in based on the device that you use to create it. Um, or you could just leave it generic and that works too. That way the profile will work for any device connected. But most people that use this program um, aren't like me where I have you know 10 different kinds of devices that I use at any given time because I'm developing for all of these. Uh, they have one go-to device and they just want it to look like another device. Uh, so, uh, for that reason, uh, we have this drop-down box now. And what this does is for your generic uh, devices, you're still going to have the mapping overrides where you create the mapping using, you know, all this stuff, which is, I've tried to make it as pretty as I can, but it's still very like I say, it looks like an engineer designed the UI instead of somebody that really works with UI applications. Um, it's very to the point. Uh, but if you select a device in here that has a mapping extension as part of the device, it replaces that list and will give you this nice graphic that you might be used to uh, with some of our other versions that were strictly just for you know mapping DualShock 4s to the Xbox 360. So what this does is any input plugin that I create, uh, there'll be an extension um, for that plugin that'll allow me to define my own custom mapping page as part of the plugin. Uh, so that gives third-party developers will have access to be able to create these, uh, you know, graphic mapping pages as well. Uh, but basically, you know, it took away that old style list and replaced it with this. And this will have, um, I haven't gotten that far yet, I've only gotten to what you see here, obviously. Uh, but this will have the buttons placed around it. They correspond uh, with arrows pointing to the areas on the controller. Um, and they'll be able to select that button, and from that will be a filtered list, which will have only have the uh, channels that are part of the output driver here. Um, so by setting, you know, the input driver and the output driver, you're really able to hone the profile in and the mapping and all that stuff to just contain what you want it to contain um, as opposed to uh, you see this has options for like all the input devices where you select the mapping override because a generic profile wants to be able to account for all these different profiles or all these different devices that might have channels that other you know, devices don't have like function keys and all that stuff. So um, that's pretty much that. Um, as I said, or as I said in the last video, Input Mapper is now completely ad-free. 
uh, 1.7 already has a new release which has no ads in it whatsoever uh, whether you're a logged in user or not uh, so uh, keeping with that input mapper 1.7 is ad free 1.6 is soon to follow uh, I still have some things I gotta figure out with how I'm gonna do that with how it communicates with the site um, particularly how I can make it look to the input mapper program that all users are now donors that's how we would that's how I'm gonna get rid of the ads uh, but still make it so uh, the account migration to the new site differentiates between donors and non donors because there is still gonna be some sort of like a extra like you know uh, cloud functionality and all that stuff for donors so um, I still gotta figure that out uh, but hopefully more people are going to start using 1.7 now anyways, so it's not going to be that big of an issue for people that are still on the old legacy versions. Um, other than that, uh, still working on a lot of the stuff on the website, um, trying to just clean it up, speed it up, make it smaller, faster, lighter, um, stuff like that, working on SEO stuff to make sure that you know we still... We stay relevant in all the searches, all that stuff, just web webmaster junk. So, um, so that's about it. Uh, I'm going to keep working on that mapping UI because I think that's going to be a big one for a lot of people that are going to want to switch over to this but don't want to deal with that old list looking style for mapping. So, um, other than that, I got a lot of translations to do, especially for all these new features I've been adding. So, I got to jump on those as well. Alright, that'll do it. I will talk to you guys next week. Have a good one.